What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with camera tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G 5G 2023. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is the Motorola Moto G 5G 2023. Now despite this device being more of an affordable entry level phone, we're actually getting quite a few cameras on here and a lot of different abilities that go along with them. So in this video, I'm looking forward to showing you everything that there is to know about the cameras so that you're not missing out. Now I wanna start off by going over what we're actually getting here. So the first thing is we have an eight megapixel front facing camera. And then on the back of the phone, we have a 48 megapixel main camera and a two megapixel macro camera for close up images. And then this phone does support portrait mode for both the rear and front cameras. So that is nice if you do like to get those nice blurred out backgrounds. Now this phone does also support 1080p video recording for the front and rear cameras as well. So that is nice. Now the first thing I wanna show you is a quick and easy way to get to the camera app at any time. And this is already enabled by default and all you have to do is just twist your wrist and it pulls up the camera. Let's try that one more time. Very cool. So that's really convenient if you want a quick and easy way to get to that app. Now there's also another cool way to do it too, and that involves double pressing on the power button, but that's not enabled by default. So what we're gonna do is pull down the shade here, go to the settings, then from there, we're gonna go down to where it says gestures, which is right here, and then from there, go down to where you see double press power key. Go there, tap on launch camera, and then now, if you double press on that button, it's gonna pull up the camera app. So that's really useful and really quick and easy. But taking a look at the camera app itself, there's a lot of different options and features here. Now the default camera, of course, is the main 48 megapixel camera, but then from there, you can tap on this flower icon to access the macro camera. And then with macro, you can get very close up and have things be really crisp and clear. But getting further into things here with the interface, on the right side here, we have a button for various filters. So if you wanna apply these filters, that is an option that you might wanna consider. Kinda of changes up the look of your photos. And then on the bottom left here, we have a button for Google Lens. Now Google Lens is a very underrated feature and I'm a big fan of it. But basically if you go there, you can take a photo of an object. So for this example, I'm gonna take a photo of this Lego and then go to search, and then now it will find that item. So you can see it identified it, and then it even shows me where I can buy it. So that's a really nice feature, especially like when I'm out in nature. I like to take photos of different trees and plants, and then Google Lens will tell me what that actually is. Now then from here, swiping over to the far left on this bottom slider, we have slow motion, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can also have the flashlight on at all times during slow motion, which is helpful. You can even mute the mic if you want to. Then we have video mode, so under video mode, you can actually take macro videos, which is something that I typically don't find with smartphones from other companies, but it seems like Motorola always gives us that ability, which is helpful in certain situations. You can also under video mode, have the flashlight on at all times. You can also disable video stabilization if you want to, not sure why you would, but that is an option. You can also go to the aspect ratio. So up here you can do the full frame of the phone. You can do 16 by nine as well. So some different choices there. And then you can also mute the mic. Then heading over to portrait mode, you can get those nice blurred out backgrounds. And you also get the ability to pick the amount of blur you want in the background. So if you want less blur, you can do that or more blur. You can make that choice. We can also flip around to the front facing camera and take portrait selfies. Or if you want to, you can take standard selfies. There's also an option here for beauty mode. So it kind of like smooths things out, but I'm not a big fan of that feature, but it is there if you want. And then yeah, you can pick the amount of blur as well for the front facing camera. Or if you want to, you can take standard selfies too. Then moving over to the pro tab, there's different options for white balance, ISO, and various modifications you can make. So that's certainly a bit more advanced. And then going to the more tab here, you can see that there's even more options. So first thing is there's spot color. So you can pick a certain color and only have that be the color that shows up in your image. You can also go under the more tab and go to night vision, panorama, group selfie, dual capture, so you can capture at the front and rear cameras at the same time. You can also pick which one you want to be the dominant camera and also the way that the layout actually is here. So you can do a 50-50 if you want to, which is pretty cool. There's also time-lapse, spot color for video, and then dual capture for videos. So definitely a lot of different choices here. Now what's cool as well is that if you want any of these options in the more tab to be on this bottom slider, you can simply go to this pencil icon to then edit. You can also remove other ones that are in this bottom slider. So let's say we're gonna take out portrait mode and then we're gonna add in spot color. We'll go to done. And then now you can see in this bottom slider, we do indeed have spot color right there. But if you go to the more tab, we have portrait mode there. 
Now back in the regular photo mode on the camera app, we have some options up top here. So there's an option for flash, for auto, on at all times, or off. There's also an option here for night vision, so you can disable that if you want to. Again, I don't know why you would, but at least you have that ability. Also HDR, you can toggle that too. And then up here as well, there's an option for the aspect ratio. So you can do three by four, you can also do one by one, so square. That's pretty nice for Instagram, for example. We can also go up here and do nine by 16 or 16 by nine, which is great for video thumbnails. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can also do the full aspect ratio for photos as well. And then if you swipe down here, you can toggle the timer and also active photos. So active photos is kind of like live photos on the iPhone where your images actually move a little bit. Now moving on from there, we can go to the gear icon here. And from there, you can see there's even more options. So the first one here is AI settings. So here's one, auto smile capture. So I'll enable that. And basically, if the camera knows I'm smiling, there we go, it'll take the photo. So just did that. That's a nice, accurate, quick feature there using AI. There's also gesture selfie. So you can show your palm and take a selfie. So I will have to take the phone out of the frame to try out this feature, but I'm gonna try it right now. Okay, there we go. <laughs> So it's not the most reliable feature, honestly, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We also have smart composition, so automatically level and implement the rule of thirds. There's also shot optimization, so it will enhance photos with automatic tuning and AI scene detection. Then going down here to photos, we have rear photo resolution, so we can pick high or regular. We also have selfie photo mirror, so keep that enabled. Basically, it will mirror your selfies so they look more natural. And then there's also the watermark. So with the watermark, you can add the date and time to your photo. And then there's also the device watermark. So it'll say the name of the phone, and then you can even add in your name. Then moving on to video settings, you can see that you can do high efficiency videos as an option, and then also capture settings. So there's quick capture. So twist your wrist quickly to open the rear camera. I already showed you that. There's also tap anywhere to capture. So we'll try that. So that works really well. And then there's also shutter sound. So if you don't want a sound to be made when taking a photo or video, you can also pick that or toggle that off. I'm gonna enable now assistive grid and leveler. So with this, you're gonna get the grid here for the rule of thirds, and then also a leveler as well to make sure your photos are level or your videos for that matter too. And then also there's keep last mode. So if you find yourself constantly going to the previous mode that you were in and you don't want the camera app to reset to the default every time that you are using the camera app, you can do that right here. And then finally, we do have save preferences. So if you want your location to be saved, you have that ability too. But this concludes my video on camera tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G 5G 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today. But overall, I've been impressed with the various cameras here in the phone. I feel like there's a lot of different abilities, of course, offered. And with this being a lower end device, you still have a lot of different features and abilities here with the device itself. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. And with all that said, I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.